Hola amigos de Tu Energy, estamos en la casa de David Hoffman que nos va a enseñar su sistema de vermicultura y también toda la casa porque está hecha toda de materiales reciclados. Vamos a verla. David, uh, you are an engineer, a fine tea importer from China, an artist, I could say. I wear many hats. Yeah. Uh, it's been a real passion of mine to to not only grow my own food, but to uh, look for the super soil, that fertilizer which makes life mm -hmm. so vibrant. Uh, Charles Darwin wrote his last yeah, book on the earthworm. Yeah. There was no other creature as important as the earthworm for sustainable life on the planet. They generate nature's finest fertilizer. Mm. So all my systems here are based on the earthworm. Mm. The stove is beautiful and it uses wood as a fuel. Uh -huh. And I actually weigh out my firewood before making a fire so I know what my carbon footprint is. And it's actually very green to use wood as a fuel, mm -hmm. assuming one knows how to make a proper fire. Then that heat goes into the stove surface and the nice thing is it gives you wonderful wood ash here. I put in uh, some oyster shells which are calcium with uh -huh. trace minerals from the ocean and once you cook them they pulverize and then they're easily digestible well, they by the with worms mm. who need calcium in their diet. But the wood ash gets strained and then uh, I make soak with this. If you soak it in water, uh -huh. it gets very strong. And if you have a greasy glass, wood ash is very alkaline mm -hmm. and it sapinifies with any oil. Oh, yeah. So it leaves that, that wood ash mm -hmm. from the sink goes directly into the worm the palace. palace. Perfect. And also the rest of the food. No, and the, the food scrap. Amazing. There we go. So they're healthy worms. This, this black soil here, it's oh. so light. There's a pure worm cast, just it has nice a smell. very pleasant smell. Yeah. So the water and the food come here? Yeah. And, and it comes digest. into the moat here. Snails living in here. There's lots of frogs. But and the plants, what they do is really to purify also the water. That's no? right. That's right. So, and from here, the water flows down to the lower moat, into a secondary filter here, and then into the holding tank. From here, the water goes down to the garden. So okay. I use our waste uh, to turn it into something valuable to feed the soil. It's a water flush system mm -hmm. and it's self-contained. Mm -hmm. It's isolated from the environment. Here is a conventional toilet. Uh, after you make a deposit, you have to add some carbonaceous material. Wood, sawdust, or shavings, and then simply flush it down. And this drops into a chamber that's full of earthworms and that digests the solids and then the liquids flow into three separate tanks down there and the last tank is the water is solar pumped up to the roof it goes into the intestines which you could call this a mini wetland it works just like wetlands do in nature where you have slow moving water passing through mm -hmm. and the plants absorb pollutants, anything that might be in the water, and then delivers clean, healthy water. The 
excess water flows into the fish tank and the fish become a monitor for the health of the recycled water. The system is designed to work any place on the planet where you have five hours of sunlight and 20 inches of rain a year. And after, uh, so you can wash your hands, but you're washing with rainwater. This is a separate water system from the, the recycled water. How much sense does it make to take purified drinking water and use it to flush our toilets, water our lawns, hose down the sidewalks. We're in a drought situation. Isn't it time to shift the paradigm and, and treat water as a precious resource? Thank you.